Y'all remember the age old saying that trouble is easy to get into but hard to get out of. Just think about it. If I gave you a tube of toothpaste and said I give you 30 bucks if you can squeeze all the toothpaste out of that tube, done deal. You'll get 30 bucks. But if I told you now I want you to take all of that toothpaste you just squeezed out of that tube and get it back into the tube without cutting the tube open, and I give you $200, you're probably not going to get that $200 because just like that tube of toothpaste is hard as hell to get it back in, that works the same way. It's easy to get access to borrowed money, but it's hard as hell to get out of that hole. I don't know. That's that's just trouble in general. Whatever trouble situation you've been into in your life, you probably got into it literally in five minutes. But getting out of it, it could have took years. <laughs> that's just kind of like real talk. Like, I can remember, like, signing a loan for a car or something that I probably shouldn't have got. And literally, it took nothing 15 or 20 minutes. But paying that damn thing over five or six years and the struggles, it was just a pain and a headache. So now I wanted to give y'all one of the key secrets that you'll need to achieve any financial goal that you have in mind. Before we dive in, I'm Marcus. I'm a licensed attorney. You're at the channel of the debt-free dad where we're talking finances financial takes attorney reactions current events all of that good stuff delayed gratification what's delayed gratification is real simple being able to delay or postpone or not get something that you desperately want until it's time for you to get it or it's the right time and everything and the circumstances around being able to get it is right being able to postpone you getting something that you want no matter how bad you want it. You know why? Because I remember back in the days when, you know, I was a kid and I would watch movies and my mother would make popcorn and she had to go to the stove and put it over the burner and shake it up. And then the huge thing would expand, expand for the popcorn to get done. But now we live in a microwave society. We want everything instantly right now. It's the reason why the microwave is so successful. Is the reason why... Instagram and Twitter and social media is so successful because we don't want to wait till six o'clock to see the news and see what's going on. We don't want to wait till 10 o'clock to see what's going on in the world. We want to be able to have that access and whatever we need right at our fingertips. But that microwave culture has got us to a position where now we're really impatient and we can't wait for things. The first thing we got to know when we're talking about delayed gratification is Nothing worthwhile comes easy. A, instant gratification is receiving a reward without having to wait or really put in any work. And, you know, when you get things fast, you have very little appreciation, very little understanding, very little respect for whatever it is that you got because you just got it by signing paperwork. You didn't wait. You didn't do it the hard way, you know. Delayed gratification is the path to get anything that's worthwhile. And at the end of the day, I'm going to just be honest. If you're, hey, I, I like to speak to the fellas, but in general, if you're over the age of 25, 26, you got to learn how to control life and not let life control you. I don't know about y'all, but I don't like being at the whim of some damn creditor. I felt like they little you know what? <laughs> and like, I don't want to feel like nobody's, you know what? I don't want to be beholden to nobody, worry about, I got to pay this person. I just don't want to do it. And we apply this concept in our house. I said some videos ago that I was going to start saving in a sinking fund so I can get my wife a new car. But I put my head and thought about it. I was like, nah, I got about 30 more racks to pay off my student loans. And I'm not buying shit until it's done. <laughs> so, hey, we're going to have to drive what we got. Now, once we get that paid off, we can reevaluate the situation. But until then, we aren't making any moves. Now, hey, is a car something that I want to get her? Is it something that she want? Is it something that she need? No, nah, not really. But in any event, now is not the right time to do it. Me giving out money for anything outside of getting rid of that debt, in my opinion, would just be goofy. The next thing you got to understand with delayed gratification is that achieving any dream is a collection of tiny accomplishments. Like if you're a content creator, if you've been on your job for 15 years, if you got a degree, a lot of people are going to look at you and say, oh man, you were lucky. 
or you're in this prime position because people are just tuned in to look at the end result. People don't look at the things that you gave up, the sacrifices that you made, the delayed gratification on things that you wanted to do or wanted that you sacrificed and did without to get to where you are. So when we achieve a dream, when we achieve a goal, all it is is a tiny collection of sacrifices to get where we want. I'm going to sacrifice hanging out. I'm going to sacrifice being able to go on that trip. I'm going to sacrifice getting this car that I want and just get something that I need that's affordable for right now so I could be in a better position. And the next thing we got to think about is instant gratification is usually a curse. I don't know. Y'all let me know what y'all think. I can only talk from my experience. But most times when I move too fast for making any financial decision, it was an instant curse. It ended up turning out being something that I probably shouldn't have done. I mean, I can think of all the instances. The time I signed up for a timeshare, luckily I was able to get out of that due to some language in the fine print. The time I probably bought a house when I wasn't ready to buy a house. The time I decided, you know what, Uh, my car was in an accident. And instead of thinking rationally, I said, you know what, I'm just going to pay to get it fixed with a credit card that ended up costing me crazy money that I probably should have just got another used car with. I mean, most times when we move too fast, we don't have that opportunity to think. It ends up being something that is a curse to us. Instant gratification is often way more expensive. Delayed gratification is a blessing. You know why delayed gratification is a blessing? Because it gives you time to think rationally and logically, especially if you're, like I said before, we all make mistakes. We all come from somewhere. DFD is far from perfect. Y'all know, y'all seen all the stupid stuff I've done with money. I tell y'all about it. I try to be transparent. But once you become a certain age, you have to realize that one of the key things and the benefits of delayed gratification is that it gives you time to think rationally and logically. Don't think with your emotions when they come to finance. Really, real talk, finance is simple. Finance, it should be broken down to fourth grade math. Can you add? Can you subtract? At its most basic fundamental level. Why the hell is this so hard? Well, it's so hard because we aren't thinking with this. We're thinking with our emotions like, oh, I want it now. I don't have it. I don't know if I could do without it. Yo, you can do without a lot. You know what I realized I could do without a lot? When I was sitting in a tent in like 120 degree weather in Iraq with no shower, getting shot at, I thought to myself, hmm, you know what? If I could survive this, I could do without a lot of shit. (laughs) But that's the way you have to look at it. You have to think with your head. You can't be emotional. Hey, fellas, I'm talking to y'all right now, fellas. You have to think logically. Yes, women think logically. Some women are more logical than others. But at the end of the day, when it comes to a household, you have to be the one to think, hmm, I know what we want, but what should we do that's going to put us in the best position to win five years from now? What can we do? I know this is what the need is. How can we accommodate this need in a matter that's going to have us in a better position 24 months from now. If you're not thinking two years from now, you're only thinking about right hand now, you need to go back to the drawing board. You need to take the goofy hat off. You need to man up and really get focused and start thinking with your head and not your emotions. The other thing we got to talk about is with delayed gratification is that if you can master the art of not wanting to move so fast to get something that you want or something that you think you need. Delayed gratification works 100% of the time. If you can think rationally and logically, think for the next 24 months as opposed to the next 24 hours, if you can master that, delayed gratification is something that can work from you for you, not only with your finances, but with your business, with your job, with your overall life, with your overall lifestyle. It's something that can definitely improve your overall quality of living. Also with delayed gratification, 
it's sustainable. Delayed gratification is something that's sustainable. What does that mean? It's something that you can do to achieve your goals and you can do that consistently throughout your lifetime. It doesn't mean that you'll never get the things you want. What it means is you have to take more thought. You have to think more logically and rationally about the things you want. Instant gratification, you feel good once you get it, but it's something that's not sustainable. Just think about it. If you got everything that you wanted or you thought you need immediately when you want it or thought you needed it, your ass would probably be homeless. <laughs> Just think about it. Like, oh man, that Tesla looked nice. I really want it. Let me go get it. Oh man, like I can think of five things right now that I wanted that I really like that I never got because they weren't necessary needs. And, and once I actually tried to convince myself that some of them were needs, what is a prime example? The uh, smart home gym, the tonal system. Oh man, when the pandemic started, I wanted a tonal so bad. It looks so cool. I like tech. It can read all these metrics and increase the weights on its own based on your strength. And you can make all sorts of gains at home. So when the pandemic started, you know what I said? I was like, oh man, I can't go to the gym. It's shut down. I should get a tonal. It's only $4,500 plus a year long subscription. What? No, that would be crazy to do. But I was actually thinking about doing it. But cooler heads prevailed. I didn't move too fast. I thought about it over a week, over a couple of weeks. And what did I do? I built my six, $700 budget home gym where I have everything I need here that I could actually work out on and make all kinds of games on. I actually did a video. I linked that video above or in the description box. Next up. One of the things you got to realize about delayed gratification is that, you know, like I said, the key is it gives you time to think. When you postpone getting something, the more the longer you postpone it, the more you can think about it, the more you can really evaluate your options. Like sometimes, I know this sounds elementary, but I make my son do this all the time. I make him write on a board if he has two choices and put the pros and cons of each choice. And that's how you should measure things out. Literally, if we just put our options in front of us and measured the pros and cons and see which one came out more favorable, if we just did that small analysis with our finances, you will probably be in a lot more favorable position. That's something that I actually do. When I'm thinking of something, I'm like, what's the benefits of this? What's the cons of this? As a grown-ass man who probably shouldn't need to do that, but I'm making Venn diagrams uh, over things related to finances because I need to visually see it. And that helps me, you know, be able to rationalize what's the logical choice right in front of me when I got all the positives and the negatives, the pros and cons right in front of me. But also with delayed gratification, we got to understand life is nothing without the journey. The journey, making those small sacrifices over time to get to our goal having that delayed gratification, it allows us to build up patience. It allows us to build up perseverance. It allows us to build up discipline. These are all things that you need. And if you can master this, you'll have a leg up on what the vast majority of the people don't have in our society. Because most people don't have the patience, the perseverance, the discipline to tell themselves no to tell their family members no, to tell their loved ones no, we can't do this. One thing I believe, I don't, I'm not going to be an enabler to anybody. As much as anyone may think it's a good idea, if it's a bad idea and it's clearly a bad idea, I'm not going to enable a bad idea. I don't give a damn what it is or who it is, and I wouldn't expect no one to do that for me, you know? So that's something that you have to, you know, take into consideration. And the final thing that I have is at the end of the day, the sacrifice will be worth it. When you do something on your own, you put the sacrifice in, you put the time in, you make those small sacrifices over months, over years to finally get to your goal. It is nothing sweeter and more satisfying than knowing that you made your goal or you seeing you hit your goal through your small accomplishments over time. 
people are gonna call you crazy, like, man, why are you doing this? But two, three years, three months, six months down the road, when you your goal is right in front of you, you're about to get your goal, you realize you made these small sacrifices, is gonna make that goal, that item, that thing that you wanted. It's going to make it that much more pleasurable, that much more enjoyable. And like I said, it'll be a blessing, not a curse. A lot of times I see all the time, not all the time, but I I see all the time and and everybody has their different philosophies on it. But uh, I see a lot of people like they'll get a house or a car or they'll get something and they'll be like, oh, they'll post it on social media and be like, look what the Lord blessed me with. And I was never one to do that. Like I've never gotten anything and been hey, I'm blessed. The Lord blessed me with this. The Lord blessed me with this. Because yes, okay, yes, the Lord does bless us with things. But for me, I'm convinced that my blessings don't come with payments and interest. That's just kind of how I am. I mean, yes, the Lord can put me and put me in a position to be able to get some of the things that I want uh, to, you know, hey, you got to put some effort in to get the things that I want. But I don't necessarily call those things blessings. Things aren't necessary blessings to me. What's a blessing to me is health. What's a blessing to me is having a skill set that's marketable in the marketplace that I can get a good return based on the skill set that I bring out here in the marketplace. What's a blessing to me is having the resources, having the patience, having the, the discipline and the structure to be able to make sacrifices now while also being able to put myself and my family in a better financial position in the future. So I count those as my blessings. Now, hey, DFD will tell you, you know, hey, if and when I get a car or I buy my next rental property and I pay for it straight cash, yeah, I'm still not going to post it on social media. But for me, that would be a blessing because in my book, for my definition, my blessings don't come with payments. I've seen a lot of times and it happens to you know, the best of them. And I don't wish it on nobody, but you're like, yes, man. Yes. This house is a blessing and something can be a blessing in one standpoint. And then under later circumstances, two or three years later, it could not be a blessing. You have to be able to identify, know what's truly a blessing and what isn't a blessing. So I don't jump and shout out material items as blessing. I think health, relationships, family, the ability to provide those are the things that i call blessings yo if you enjoyed this video make sure you check out the video on the screen and subscribe to the channel hit the like button hit that bell notification 